Blog Talk Radio. Hi, and welcome to Linda's Lounge, Awakening the Consciousness, and I'm your host, Linda Summers, and we've got an amazing show for you today. Our topic is One Day, One Moment in Time with Terry Earthwind Nichols and Linda Vetris Nichols. And I'd like to give you a little bit of background information about Terry and Linda before we get started with the show. From Terry's experience as a Navy recruiter and profiler, he created five exceptional marketing teams winning seven national championships. He's helped healers and practitioners go back in time in order to identify and release emotional ties that are holding them back. Through the techniques he has developed, his clients find the peace they are looking for in both their business and their personal lives. And Linda's experience in education and behavioral assessments has helped her to understand the importance of having goals with detailed objectives and how they are related to individual personalities. As the owner of three franchises, she's learned that it is important to develop relationships with other business owners and their source of influence. With the use of her up-leveled skills and extensive experiences, coupled with developing the patterned learner concept, she can now help her clients reach their goals and dreams. And with that, I'd like to welcome Terry and Linda to the show. Hello, we're welcome. We Hi. are glad, happy to be here. <laughs> Hello, yes. thank you so much, Linda. You're welcome. Thank you for joining. So we've got a great show in store for today. But I really, you know, what really came to my mind as right before we went on air was the topic: one day, one moment in time. So we can can we kind of begin there a little bit? Like, how did you come up with that topic? One day, one moment in time. Like, what does that mean? Oh, that is such a great question, and I'm going to turn that one totally over to Terry because he really gets this. Well, uh, what we have found, myself included, uh, we are born with an already established personality, and, and as we age, we become um, present with with various things that happen to us in our life that, that change the way we look at life. Uh, don't touch that fire, it's hot. Uh, do this, that types of things, which create filters in our thought process. And um, quite often, very early on in our childhood, uh, uh, most of the time language, something occurs that creates a victimization. And when it Mm -hmm. does, it takes away a big piece, if not all of that personality we started with. It's not our fault. Uh, we became a witness to something that, that changed the way we looked at life and how we would act and react in it. So uh, much like uh, a, ch- a young child watching a violent act occur to their parents created an amnesic event, at least that child, as bad as it is, has... Uh, emergency people around them. They have people who know them in in front of the memory and in back of the memory to help them through that and break that apart and and, um, really neutralize the amnesia that was created. Well, if you were the only person that was witness to the situation happening and the person who was responsible for creating it didn't Mm -hmm. know who did something, there's no way to fix it because there's no one there to go wait a minute, you're different. Uh, exactly. And so one day, one moment in time, your life changed. And what, what uh, repetitive behavior cellular regression does is the practitioner helps our clients go back in, using alternate neural pathways to find the back door of this amnesic event and open it up, neutralize the emotional bond that the amnesia has, and give them their life back. So it's a beautiful uh, sequence of events that we create and help our, our clients with really all over the world. Right. Absolutely. So when you're talking about cellular, the, um, cellular regression, that's really what you're saying is take, going at the cellular your level and regressing, going back and, and extracting that. Is that what I hear you saying? Well, first of all, it's, uh, cellular regression is actually a term, um, trademark term, used in cancer research for regressing cancer wow. cells. Ha! <laughs> so we found that out. And we added repetitive behavior cellular regression. 
And what uh, happened, yeah, we call it CR for short. And the CR process um, is basically how we refer to it. So what we're doing is um, the number one thing that is going to turn around the, everything the way everybody thinks now is the fact that we go through the senses and we keep people completely out of story. And that's why our process is working so well with post-traumatic stress. Um, when someone's kept out of their story, they're kept out of emotion, they're kept out of ego, and really, truly, when the, they're at their soul level, it's so beautiful. Um, at the end of their session, they're just absolutely hit with a wave of inner peace. Maybe hit isn't the best word, <laughs> but it mm -hmm. just so washes over them. It's so amazing, and they sort of settle down in their chair with, you know, they're kind of, mm, you know, and this sweet little smile on their face. And some people even just look, you know, 10 years younger, and they almost look like they've lost weight off their face. It's, it's a beautiful um, thing to watch. Right. And to go back into what you were talking about with the cellular memory is it is very deep. Mm -hmm. uh, scientists yeah. are uh, only recently, in the last 15 to 20 years, really come to terms with the fact that uh, DNA actually um, – holds on to memories and things like that 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 can be passed on and they're they're very close to to proving it non negotiably now, which is is a very deep memory process that, that we help our clients with. So you were spot on with the with the cellular memory part because they really go deep when they're uh, or I, I I would rather say they they are able to go further without emotion uh, in, oh. in, back in, into memories that are selected for them by their subconscious. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. Right, without you know, without medication. Yep. Well, yep. and I, what I found what I find is interesting as well is that I don't know if a lot of listeners know that that are listening to the show or that will come back on and be listening. Uh, by the way, if anyone um, does want to call and ask questions to Terry and Linda, please do call in at three four seven eight five zero eight four two three. But what I was going to say is that. I don't know if a lot of them know because I didn't even know this until, you know, a few, well, quite a years back, but that when our cells regenerate, they regenerate with the same memory. Is that true? Yes, that's, that's, that's what I've heard. Yes, yes, we would agree with that. And that our research is, is really bearing that out. Mm -hmm. I knew that five years ago when I created this, helping someone else with their issues, that, um, this this was a researchable. This was something really big. I just felt it deep down inside. And so I have kept um, a researchable um, document of information on every cellular regression session. All of our, our practitioners mm -hmm. all over the world uh, send in a, um, a privacy uh, cellular regression report, giving us the demographics, not their personal information, obviously, um, that, that we then use. I would like it to our listeners to understand this this analogy. If you get mm -hmm. a mosquito bite on, let's say your hand, and uh, it's that mosquito bite actually is burning, but it feels itchy, so we scratch it. And as we scratch it, it makes us feel good at least initially. So the body keeps reproduces that feeling or wants to reproduce that. We then put salve on the mosquito bite. The mosquito bite actually stops burning. But the cellular memory around the mosquito bite goes, oh, Terry, you, you stop itching, you stop this, this, this feeling, but that's okay. We know it. We've still got it, so we're going to do it some more, and you scratch right. the effective area again. So mm -hmm. that's really how cellular memory works. Now, early on in, in when we were developing this further into its current model, we found that... Um, about two to three weeks after we would go through the, the initial three, three or four hour session back in those days, and it's down to two or three now, but back in those days we would find uh, later that the client started regressing back. We couldn't figure it out. We'd go through another session. They'd be good for two or three weeks and they'd start again. And that's when we discovered uh, mm -hmm. that there there is a, a, a real requirement for the for the cl uh, client to stay present with what they're doing. And not only 
uh, start a self repatterning of themselves so that their body no longer wants to feel the way it used to because it doesn't know that it's a good feeling or a bad feeling. It's just reproducing right. with 30, 40 years for some people. Mm-hmm. Right. We always tell clients there's no good memories, there's no bad memories, there's just memories, and, and that is exactly. you know, forward uh, to that yeah. more full level, if you will. Mm-hmm. Which I think is good to really to look at that as not really being good or bad. It just is this memory that's planted in there. And I noticed too that you guys are, that you're also mentioning that um, it helps the clients to permanently remove the emotional drivers of repetitive behavior. So it's really kind of a two question: is how would you know if it's permanently removed? And then, the, well, I guess the emotional drivers. What what are emotional drivers? The emotional drivers uh, for a lot of what uh, we're finding, we're also finding, by the way, Linda, that uh, this is fun to two Linda's here. <laughs> so neither of you know who I'm really actually talking to. But uh, <laughs> we find that the emotional drivers are the, 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 the cellular memory is, is creating neural energy that, that goes towards uh, uh, memory events that were highly emotional subsequent to the event that we're looking for, which we call the block, okay? Right. Mm-hmm. So what happens is uh, the brain and the body is doing its job, to, and that's to protect uh, the person. And so what happens is the block becomes amnesic, so it's cut off. And the neural pathway that you would use, uh, let me back up just so that your your listeners can follow this. When we that's think okay. of something memory... Okay. We use the same neural pathway to go back and get that memory every single time. That's right. why Alzheimer's and some of these other diseases, uh, uh, traumatic brain injury, things like that, cut off our ability to remember things. That's because something happened to the neural pathway. Well, in amnesia, there is like a filter put on it where uh, neural energy can go from the blocked memory out to new memories that are highly emotional. And it, it, it sends these messages out like the itching skin around the mosquito bite so that the conscious memory is always picking up on this memory that won't, won't stop being remembered. Uh, most mm-hmm. common talked about uh, today is obviously PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm-hmm. And just recently that has been expanded to complex PTSD where people are dealing with multiple ones at, at the same time. Um, military sex trauma, suicide ideation, can't quit smoking, cannot stay married. You know, all of multiple these are repen- partners. multiple partners, right. friends, relationships, jobs. Mm-hmm. All of those are repeated behaviors. A, a good example here would be to for repetitive behavior. If on mm-hmm. New Year's last year you made a resolution to stop doing something, but you did it before you went to bed, that's one thing that if you make the same resolution the next year and break it before you go to bed, that's a repetitive behavior, right? Uh, So Mm -hmm. that's a really good way for people to understand how things repeat themselves without consciously being aware of it. So people uh, would make... Sorry? I said, which is so true, repetitive behavior. We do it all the time not even knowing we're doing it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, You know, Mm -hmm. the person who self-sabotaged. I started, I retired from the Navy in 1991. I, I love to say late last century because it's fun. Uh, but I, when I retired, uh, I couldn't keep a job, okay? Uh, I, I would start a business or I would get a job and I would be just phenomenally successful at it and turn right around and self-sabotage it within three years. Amazing. I kept doing it over and over and over. I'm a really spiritual guy, and I'm talking to God one day, and I'm, you know, and and I'm saying, you didn't send me here to do this. I don't understand this, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, help me find out why this is happening. And and within a few months later, I befriended a friend on um, Facebook from Australia. I was living in the Twin Cities of Minnesota, and uh, I was helping her uh, because I, I'd been a lifelong helper of people. And after about two or three weeks, we, we would get to a point where, where we would start to get somewhere and something would happen. And then it would happen again and again. 
Well, one night uh, I was helping her because it was either early morning at her and late night for me or the opposite. So I was helping her one night, and a thought came to mind, and it said, have her close her eyes and ask her what she's smelling. And it felt valid, so I did, and she did. And she opened her eyes after only just a split second and said, oh, my God, I smell gas. And I figured it would be probably natural gas, but I asked her, oh, gasoline, diesel, what is it? And she says, no, natural gas, and this is an electric building. There must be a fire. And I go, no, but I think we got something here. Close your eyes. Smell the gas again. Let me know when you smell the gas. She says, yeah, I smell it. I said, okay, mm-hmm. go back in time and find a memory where you smell that gas. And she did. Uh, so we started mm-hmm. working about two and a half months of three, five to, to seven hours a week, uh, what we now know as repetitive behavior cellular regression was created. Uh, mm-hmm. and because it's counter to normal psychotherapeutic therapies and modalities, is you work on the story. They want you to tell it over and over and over and over and over again in hopes of breaking into something. Right. This has nothing to do with what's driving you nuts. Yeah. Nothing. We never ever speak about it. Even with our PTSD clients, a year, Actually. 15 months down the road, we have never ever talked about the memory that was that was bothering them when they came to us. And that's the power so of this. Because it's being driven by a memory way back. Right. Wow, it's incredible. So how do you, because I know um, you talk about, do you do this, this online, there's a non-medical question and answer, like how is this process, how, is, how does it work? Do they come and see you? No. Um, you know? This is 100% online. We're non-medical, so there's no hypnosis, no pharmaceuticals, or, um, you know, there's no outside influences whatsoever. So what takes place, is um, people contact us through, we, we do a lot of presentations at events, uh, coaching events, business culture events, all those kinds of things. And and that's where we, we contact a lot of people, but they're still online and, and coaches in the coaching industry send us uh, their people to help out and send back to them. But, but what takes place is once we start a conversation is we, we get on Skype online in the comfort and security of the, of the client's home and we, we go through a process that seems very random to the client but it's very specifically worded and sequenced so it can be reproduced. I just graduated, in fact, uh, this coming Sunday night, uh, I will be graduating my first class of master practitioners who will be going out people how to become more practitioners. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. It's so fun to have something that works so well yeah. and yeah. to see that it can be duplicated and it can be duplicated even like better almost. <laughs> they're so brilliant and they're running yeah. with it so marvelously. Um, yeah. We have someone just graduating and she's like, I have a vet and he has a lot of anger, had a lot of anger issues while well, they still do it, just, you know, kind of hidden in another way, you know, from Vietnam. And she hasn't even graduated yet. And so for her practice, when she wants to do, like, hardcore, you know, <laughs> and wow. she got figured out how she's going to do it and how we're supporting her through it. Yeah, it's amazing yeah. that we have someone along what, in their ranks. Because so this work is gaining national, international attention as well, like you had mentioned. And then you've also got an event coming up April 13th to the 18th, I believe. Is that what you had said? Yes. The 17th, yes. yes. It's a five-day yes. event. Thank you for yes. that. It's called Protecting Your Business. And wow. um, actually, I mean, I don't know if you realize how much money people are right now, um, you know, on Facebook. Facebook ads are just crazy town unless you've got someone supporting you who knows exactly how to tweak an ad until they, you know, get it just right so that it is possible. But um, right. Michelle, yeah, Michelle Bridger is amazing at that. And um, we we have a, a demand, uh, market demand expert to help people with uh, the niche that actually is ready to pay you. We have an amazing brander. We have... Um, so a lawyer who is very familiar with the coaching industry and, you know, totally helps uh, coaches stay uh, 
safe and up to date on, you know, legally what they're putting in their contracts and avoiding chargebacks and things like that. I'm doing relationship <laughs> marketing and asking for the sale. So we're very excited. It's five days, and they're done in our live classroom, which is exciting. So um, our mm -hmm. online class, there will be the recordings. But, you know, so it's two pictures, you know, I mean, it's like a live stream almost where Terry's talking. Um, yeah. So it's two pictures of them talking, and then they go small, and they're going to actually walk you through their webinar series. Um, nice. the, I love that. Yeah, and the listeners, uh, um, your website and how they can get in touch with you to learn more about that. But I want to, you know, you had mentioned, um, well, I want to ask you, how did CR spread across America and the country? Because this is now, you mentioned it spanned over five continents, nine countries, and 21 U.S. states, including 21 U.S. states. That's huge. Yeah. It is huge in it 33 is. months. So that's between our clients and our practitioners. Yep. There's real powerful. Uh, it's it, it's really amazing because 97% of our our clients, uh, which our practitioners start out as clients, 97% um, mm. are females, um, from 16 to 77, and six uh, between six and seven out of ten of our clients go on to practitioner training because they want to do this for other people. It's it's wow. life changing. You know, I'm often quoted on the Internet in different places to say that we change lives every day, and more times than not, we save lives. And it's really true. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I noticed, too, you're working in the area of suicide prevention. Or, uh, yeah, suicide prevention, and we've you talked about the post-traumatic stress, which, you know, that, it's a huge um that's such a huge area to really – you don't really realize how – the percentage of how high that is until you really have to look into those fields. So you guys, it sounds like you're uh, getting very specialized in those areas, yes? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or what? No, I, I would what? disagree with that statement. Um, PTS, no, there is a question, um, yeah. Yeah, PTS is so big. I would say it's probably somewhere in the 70% range of all urbanized population. Wow. Because uh, every time we, we talk to a different group of people, we find PTS. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just really, um, uh, it's a godsend in, in one way because about the time we find a group, we find somebody who wants to be a practitioner who wants to work in that group. We have a middle school counselor who wants to work with teenagers. We have uh, uh, an army that mm -hmm. works exclusively with that. So there's a lot. You know, as it gets bigger, yeah. there's People show up who want to be that market, so that's fabulous. Exactly. Well, let, can you can you explain what post traumatic stress is for our listeners in case they don't really have an idea what that is? They may have a different perception, and maybe you you can help them with that understanding, getting clarity around that. Yeah, I'll jump in on that one. I like to think okay. of it as a string of beads, and the very first bead is what Terry and I end up going and finding, and it's, it's all walled in and protecting itself because something happens. Mm -hmm. And it can, can be something traumatic or, or something like um, Daddy walks by the Kool-Aid stand and says mm -hmm. to two sisters, you know, to his two daughters, you're never going to make any money at that. One of them takes it and victimizes it. The other one is like, whatever. And then yeah. the uncle comes along and taps that same one who victimizes on the head and says, don't worry, you're just going to, you know, be an at-home mom and, you know, you'll, you're not going to have a job anyway, right? So it's kind oh, of like double it. victimization. Right. And it drives her events through her life. It drives her thoughts. And, and even though she ha ends up with a, a great, you know, career, really decent job, she comes home every night so afraid that she was going to be fired the next day. Mm -hmm. And so it became like her post-traumatic stress, if you will. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting when something happens and then it creates all these other events. And then the nervous system gets overloaded, like then her husband actually uh, died from cancer. So now it's like a, into a whole other level of PTSD exactly. for her. So you know, she slipped out more with that than maybe she would have, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, um, got it. We worked with a 16-year-old, and um, there was a fire in the neighborhood, and, we, you know, everybody thought that two months of PTSD was from the fire, and so did she. And when right. we took her through the process, she's been interviewed by us, too. 
Um, and yeah, actually, she was able to do her PTSD story. That's the new level that we're at where they can talk about their stories as long as they, they we have a little special little technique for them so they don't get yeah. triggered. And it's just been amazing. But it was, you know, actually yeah. based on caring for siblings and, um, you know, getting in trouble at like age five for that. And yeah. so it's yeah. fascinating what we find. Exactly, yeah. Well, we've got about four minutes left, and I want the callers and listeners to be able to know how to get in touch with you, to know more about what you, because you do so many different things, and you've got some things coming up. So how can they get in touch with you? Yeah, they are more than welcome to call our phone number. It's 828-2535, and we do have a gift uh, at evolutionaryhealer.com. That's evolution, A-R-Y, evolutionary, healer, like heal thyself, H-E-A-L-E-R, healer, healer, evolutionaryhealer.com. And we have um, our uh, getting in the money flow that will help. It's like a workbook to help with even social media and um, uh, authentic rate and, and different things. So that's our gift to your listeners. Right. And when you go to the website, listeners, you can go to the events page and sign up for uh, our series. So, um, yeah, that's available. And on Facebook, um, uh, just uh, look me up, Terry Earthwind Nickel, and Evolutionary Healer page. And you'll see the, the advertising and the link to go to the webinar series, Protecting Your Business. So there's a number of different ways to get there and, and enjoy what we have to offer. Well, and at the end of the um, video, when I transfer all this information over, I will have the credits at the end. And do you want me to go ahead and put your phone number on there as well? The sure. 826762535. Okay, because I'll also have your website so people will be able to um, when they watch the video, they'll be able to see the credits at the end as well. So, amazing. Great. Great. That's awesome. We appreciate well, that. that. Thank you. You're so welcome. Is there like a gem that you'd like to share with our listeners that really helped the both of you in your own awakening? Well, I think one of the mindset things is that I have to versus I get to that Terry teaches. Do you, you want to critique that? Yeah. Mindset can change your life, reduce your, your negative stress, et cetera. So we have a mindset um, exercise that we give to all of our clients and our practitioners mm -hmm. and our clients as well, and that is um, when you have to do something, you set a mindset that you probably are not going to accomplish it, whereas if you get to do something, you shift the way you think about it. So here's a yeah. great example to use. I got to get up by seven, uh, six fifteen in the morning because uh, if I get the kids up late and the dogs out late, I'm going to be late and I'm going to miss my chance to speak at the staff meeting tomorrow, and that'll be terrible. Now I'm shifting that. Tomorrow morning is going to be the greatest day on earth. I'm getting up before my clock goes. I'm getting the kids up. Everybody's out. The dogs are fed and put together. I'm fifteen minutes early, ready for go. Uh, to get to work, and I get to make the presentation of my career. You see, the difference there is is, is night and day, and so Absolutely. that that we would pass on. Beautiful, I love that. So, listeners, if you're listening and you want to stop repetitive behavior, stop the self sabotage, stop, you know, stop the procrastination, really unblock anything that's not serving you. Call. Terry and Linda at 828-676-2535. Their website is evolutionaryhealer.com. You can also go to Facebook and um, search evolutionaryhealer.com to find their series. And I just want to thank, you know, Terry and Linda really for coming to the show and this, this information and really who you guys are in the world and really helping to shift and raise and awaken the consciousness. I'm really thankful for that. So... Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And yeah, this, this was awesome. fabulous. Thanks for inviting us. It's just been great. Uh, well, thank you so much. And I want to thank all the listeners out there 
who are who have joined us today, who will be joining us afterwards. Thank you so much for um, listening. And if you have any comments or questions, please write them, share and like. And yeah, so we look forward to hearing from you and all your comments. So thank you again so much.